for you guys. Yeah. I had a question for you guys. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I may sound younger when I'm speaking, but I'm not young. So I'm probably a lot older than you guys. And so the questions for everyone on the panel, basically I go way back. So I don't know how far you guys go back. I know, Joe, you're into subwoofers. I know Aaron does a lot of speaker measurement. I know Chana, you know, I, I, I started watching Chana to learn a lot about home theater stuff. And the, but before, before home theater, I was into two channel sounds, right? Since I was very young. And mm -hmm. I used to go over to a uh, place in Brooklyn Heights um, called Innovative Audio. Okay, so, and I used to go there and I used to hang out with the owner and he used to take me into all the, the rooms that he had. And, I, and I, that's why when, when Aaron was saying that he would have three different rooms, it reminded me so much of the store because what they had was a very high end room. They had like a middle of the range room and mm -hmm. then they had a, a kind of a, I wouldn't say budget, but you know, more. A beginner room. And you beginner could room. like, yeah, and you could kind of go in and you could like just hear anything in there. So that way you can kind of figure out like what you can afford, you know, what's going to work for you. So funny because I remember way back, you know, I was around when there was Bozak Concert Grand. And I don't know if you guys ever, ever heard of those. Um, <laughs> the AR, Acoustic Research AR3A, speakers like that, you know, from way back. I mean, I go back that far. Mm. So, and I have an old M&K uh, subwoofer. It's the MK. 12, I think it oh, is. Yeah. Um, and I've had that. It doesn't even work anymore, but it, it's still sitting downstairs in the home theater area. Um, but the question I have is this, and, I, and I'm kind of long winded. They call me Tangent Man. So um, <laughs> the question That's, is, Hey, that was a character in Mega Man. Was it? <laughs> no. I'm so just here's the thing I've loved audio for a long time, and I've listened to a lot of speakers, and I've listened to a lot of high end speakers. But the question that I have is, has speaker technology changed a lot from, let's say, 10 or 20 years ago? And, and the reason I'm asking the question, it may sound stupid because you say, well, 20 years, of course. But the reason I'm asking the question is because I noticed today that speakers like, I think it's, I don't know if it's pronounced Bukar or mm -hmm. something like that. They have the 400s. And everyone raves about those speakers, and they're, they're like a bookshelf size speaker. And I'm not, I'm, I, that's not how it was in my time, right? In my time, when you wanted a good speaker, you, you brought speakers and they basically they took up a lot of space. A lot of space, right? yeah. And, well, because ba back then, yeah. you know, the speakers were having like a 10 inch woofer, 12 inch woofer. So you had to have yeah. a cabinet that size, right? And um, mm -hmm. I remember I started DJing with my cousin back in 96, and he had. A, just a Serwin Vega pair of Serwin Vegas with a 15 inch woofer, you know, mid range of tweeter, but like those things were huge, you know, and that's what, that's what we were DJing on <laughs> were these Serwin Vegas. So yeah, no, yeah. I totally know what you mean. And I think with like DSP, you know, they've gotten the technology, they've gotten the speakers slim instead of doing like a 10 inch woofer, they're doing three, six and a half or two eights or something like that. You know? Yeah, back in the day, it just had to be the same height as your rack, right? Yeah. So you had your yeah. your stereo rack, turntable on top, you know, cassette deck, you know, a little graphic the EQ equalizer. <laughs> the speakers <laughs> would just be the same height, so it looked like you know cohesive design. Yeah. But yeah, so, so I my, think it's funny. It's yeah. funny. My my speakers are actually taller than my rack because I have Boston Acoustic A two hundred. If you look those up, yeah, they're wide and flat. They're made to go against the wall, ah. right? so they're kind of tall and they're and they're flat and and. The woofer is way down at the bottom, so it can couple with the floor. And then the mid-range and tweeter at, at air level for when you're sitting, mm. right? But they're huge. They're big speakers. Yeah. I'm still using them today. But, but yeah, I, I was yeah. wondering if speaker technology has changed, if, if, if things have improved. I would say not, not a whole lot. Real, real the, quick. The same dynamics are involved. I have a question about the ones that you're referring to, the boo cart ones, though. Are those the ones that are active and they have DSP? Uh No. No. I don't believe they are. Uh, I, I know they have a passive radio in the back, and, mm -hmm. but I don't, think, I don't okay. think they're active. Because I know, Aaron, you've reviewed the ones that are that are active, right? They have DSP yeah. built into them. To me, that's the yeah. biggest change, right? DSP right. allows your speaker to be small and still play deep, mm -hmm. right? It's kind of like changing the dynamics of what is possible with a small speaker, just like you're saying with your SB3000, right? Same thing. Without DSP you couldn't really do that same thing. 
So okay. the advancement is in the DSP that's built into a lot of these. I know Bucart does have some that are powered and they use DSP. But um, Aaron, what do you say? Do you think that technology has changed or is it maybe that you have the measurements to do make better speakers? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on who you ask. Like some, I mean, I've interviewed loudspeaker engineers and some of them have said that they don't think that things have changed much. You know, when you boil it down, the engineering is kind of the same. It's just now that they're able to um, do more, I guess. Like DSP would be one, but then you've got companies like Purify who are kind of going like the next step with their weird surround, you know, to um, I guess to knock down some extra distortion artifacts and there's some kind of I don't know. There's other things going on in the motor that are kind of beyond my understanding, frankly, at this point, because I don't even remember half of what I was told about it. But yeah, I think there is, there are certainly developments. Um, trying to think here. I think one thing that I've seen that kind of comes from the car audio side and it's gotten into the home audio side is they try to optimize speakers for smaller enclosures, right? Because the car, you've got really limited space. And a lot of that seems, a lot of that engineering has kind of seemed to bleed over into home audio so now to now where they'll have smaller enclosures smaller bookshelf speakers and things like that um also with the clipple not just the near fill scanner but the other clipple products you're able to understand like what is causing distortion you're also able to understand what is causing like rubbing and buzzing and things like that you know from uh low tolerance parts so now you have manufacturing that's better quality as well so i think I think it depends on who you ask. Maybe in the overall grand scheme of things, like speaker designs haven't really changed, but the drivers have, and that allows you to get a little bit more bass out of them and things like that. But no more paper cones, right? Well, at least now your phone yeah, yeah, no more ever again, right? You don't have this, right this yes. phone. rubber surrounds and things like that. Yeah, mine, mine did, and I actually had to replace them. I had to re refoam them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. so they know what to use now. Just like there's. I think with everything, little little there things, is, there is the possibility of advancement, right? So the more technology, the more advanced we get, we have the capability to make better stuff. Now, whether the companies use that technology to make better speakers or to just make it, you know, try to increase their profit margin, right? Yeah, Sometimes that happens. That's a question. Where they're just like, hey, just make make use the cheaper stuff, and then let's just use ZSP. You see what I'm saying? So it doesn't mean that we actually get better speakers but they have the capability to make better speakers even like even um i was watching the thing on like those herman miller chairs like the oh, yeah. eames chair with the wood that you know oh like that man. was a new technology to bend the wood like that right before they couldn't they didn't have wood you know they didn't know how to do that and now look i'm looking at this speaker right it's a like a like a sphere and this is not a super expensive speaker i wouldn't say i mean it's not cheap but it's a you know it's a round it's round right and so even if you look at some of the original um, LS358s, right? Very popular monitor speakers. They're, they're like just squares, right? You know, they didn't have any round parts to it. And the baffle wasn't even flush. You know, it was kind of recessed a little bit and they kind of had to use the grill to kind of uh, even things out. So with that speaker, they had to use the, you know, I think that's why they had to use the BBC diff because the crossover from the speaker to the tweeter they had some issues. They kind of had to do, you know, stuff like that to make it sound good. So now we can easily make a speaker without the BBC dip, right? You can make a good speaker. So it's just like that. I think we have the capability to make better speakers nowadays. If you're interested in joining us in the after show, you can visit patreon.com forward slash daily hi-fi. We'd love to hang out with you and get to know you better. We're going to have a lot of fun.